Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be doing an overview of the battle simulator to get. We'll first check out the two different game modes in the game, sandbox mode and campaign. So if I click the sandbox button, it'll take me to the sandbox level. And I can select a unit with the left mouse button. And then if I press the left mouse button again, I can place units across the level. And then I can remove units by going over a unit and pressing the right mouse button and it will delete it. And to start a battle, you just press the start battle button and you can watch the units fight. After the battle is over, you can press return and it will show how the units were before the battle. In the game, you can possess a unit by clicking on it with the left mouse button. And to attack with that unit, you just press the left mouse button. If you want to leave the unit, you can press the F key and it will go back to doing what it was doing. In this kit, there are three different units, a knight, a zombie and an archer. The knight and zombie are melee units and will try and get close to a unit and attack them. The archer is a ranged unit and will try and attack the unit by shooting a projectile at them from a distance. Later in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up and add your own units if you'd like to do that. Next, let's check out the campaign mode. To get there, we can press the P key, which will open the pause menu, and press exit, and we'll be taken back to the main menu. Then we go to campaign and select level one. And in this level, we have a set budget, which we'll have to use to defeat the units in the game. So I'll just select like 10 knights and I should win the battle. And once I beat that level, I can go to the next level. And later I'll be showing you how to create your own level if you'd like to add another level to the campaign mode. So now that we've got that introduction out of the way, I'm gonna show you how to set up your own units and new factions for the game. So next I'm gonna show you how to add your own unit to the game. I'm gonna be adding this wolf character. The first thing you want to do is make sure your unit has a blend space. To do that, you want to right click and go to animation and look for blend space 1D and select the skeleton of your unit. So I'll just call this my wolf blend space 1D. Then you want to head inside here and where it says zero, you want to place your character's idle animation. So I'll look for my wolf idle animation. And where it's around 50 in the middle, you want to find your character's walking animation. And then you want to look for your character's running animation and place this at 100. So next we're going to set up a simple animation blueprint for our character. So you want to right click, look for animation and animation blueprint and then select your character's skeleton. I'll just call this my wolf animation blueprint. And then if we head inside here, in the animation graph we just want to right click and look for new state machine and just plug this in here then we want to double click and go inside here and drag in our wolf blend space and plug entry into here and double click and go inside here right click on this none variable and promote it to a variable and call this speed and then we want to head over to the event graph and from the try get pawn owner we want to drive here and look for is valid and plug this in here and off here, we want to look for get velocity. And from the return value, you want to look for vector length. And then we want to drag in our speed and look for set speed. And plug this in here. And it's validated to here. And click compile. So now we have an animation blueprint for our character, which will let us know which speed he should be at. Next, we want to close this. And you want to look for your character's attacking animation. So the animation that your character is going to play when it tries to attack another unit. So I'm just going to look for wolf attack and I think I'm going to use this wolf in place attack back front. Once you found your animation you just want to right click on it and look for create and create and a montage. Then you want to double click and go inside this animation montage and then you want to click this pause key and you want to look for the place in the animation before your actor is about to attack. So I think it's around here's when my wolf's about to attack something and once you found the place you want to go to the notice tab, right click and look for add notify and montage notify. So this will just let the game know in this system when the unit should do an attack and do damage if there's something in front of it. So that's why we want to add this play montage notify. Then we want to head back to our character's animation blueprint and head over to the anim graph and just drag off here and look for default slot and plug this in here. This will just allow it so our character can do animation montages. 
So now that we set up the walking and attacking animations for our character, we're now going to set up our character so it can be placed in the level. So to do this, we can just close this and head over to the units tab and go to blueprints. And then you want to select this base enemy BP, right click on it and look for create charred blueprint class. And I'll just call this my wolf unit. Then we can double click and go inside here. And as we can see, if we go to the details panel and go to unit information, there's a couple of bits of information we can fill out. So first we can select our unit type. We're first going to be covering melee units, so I'm just going to leave this out here. And then we can type in our unit's name, so I'm going to call it wolf. Next we need to select our unit's image. So this needs to be 400 width by 400 height. And earlier I made this wolf image, so I'm just going to select it. And when we select this image, we'll be able to spawn this unit into the world. We can ignore unit projectile and unit ranged animation. We just want to select an animation for its melee attack. So we just go here and select the animation montage that you made for your unit earlier. So this will be the animation which will play when our unit tries to attack something. Next we can set up our unit's price, so we'll make it 100. And you can set up the unit color element index. I'll explain what this does in a bit. Now that we've got that set up, we can go to the mesh. And for the skeletal mesh, you just want to select the skeletal mesh of your unit. So mine was called SK Wolf. And then for the animation class, you just want to select the animation blueprint that we just made. So mine was called Wolf Animation Blueprint. And then you just want to make sure it fits in your capsule. So I'll just adjust the size of my capsule so it fits around the wolf. And then next, you want to select the melee box trace start and move this in front of your unit. So when our units attack, they'll do a box trace and the box trace will start by this melee trace boxes. Next, if we select our unit, we can see that in the materials it has element zero and element one. If we go back to the wolf unit, this is what this unit color element index is. So if I click the play button, and I spawn units, we can see if it spawns on the left, it spawns its normal colors, but if it spawns on the right, it spawns with a different color. So it spawns with red. So with this wolf, if I spawned it on the other side, unit color element index zero would be red. So this color would be red if I spawned it on the enemy side. Next, we need to put in the stats for our unit. So if I scroll down, we can go to enemy stats and we can set the stats for our unit. So we can make it have a health zone of like, 200 and I'll make its max health 200 as well. We can make this have a speed of something like 900 so it's really fast and attack damage of 45. Next is the enemy unit. So when we place a unit into the level this will just count that we spawned a unit into the level so we can just leave this at the default value of 1. Next we have in our melee attack cooldown. So after our melee unit attacks there'll be a cooldown before it can attack again. So I'm going to change this value to be 2. So after my wolf has attacked, I have to wait two seconds before it can attack again. We can just leave this ranged attack cooldown as we're a melee unit. Then next we have our acceptance distance. This will be how close our unit moves towards another unit. And then we have our attack distance. So this will be at what distance our unit will start trying to attack another unit. We can both leave these values at their default values. Next we're going to add this unit to our player character. So to do that, we're going to head over to the player character folder and go to blueprints and player camera. Then here under the variables, we're gonna to go to player and select the factions. Then we wanna create a new faction by clicking this plus icon. And I'll click here. And I'm gonna name this faction animals. And in each faction, you can have a maximum of six units. So for the first unit that's gonna be in this faction, I'm gonna select the wolf unit that I just made. And then this wolf will be added to our character. So now if I click play, and I go to my sandbox game mode and select my unit types by clicking here and going to animals. I'll be able to see my wolf unit and it'll cost 100 because that's what we made it cost. I can spawn it into my levels. If I click the start battle game, my wolves will start trying to run up to each other and will start trying to attack each other. I can click on one of them to possess them and I'll be the unit and I can run about. And I'll just press F to leave and let it fight for me. So now, if you wanted to create a range unit, you would head over to your unit and select it. And in the unit type, you would change this to be ranged. And for the unit projectile, I have two ranged projectiles. I have this arrow. And when this fires, this will stick into the actor that it hits. I also have this projectile. And when this fires, 
it won't stick into that actor that's here you could just change this with your own static mesh if you wanted to so if i head to my wolf unit i'll make it sh shoot the projectile i don't have a range animation so i'm just going to use the wolf in place attack animation and when that animation notifier plays it will spawn a projectile where the projectile will spawn if we go to projectile spawn location and select it and just move this in front of our unit i can then scroll down and go to my enemy stats and make it so it has a cooldown of two seconds and for the acceptance distance we can make this much bigger so i'll make it 200 and i make the attack distance something like 300. so now i can compile and play go to my sandbox game mode go to my all units animals set my wolf inside my wolf they'll start trying to attack each other from a distance maybe that was a bit too close so i'm going to change the acceptance distance to be something like 800 and the attack distance to be something like a thousand and if i could compile play go back to my sandbox and set my wolf units they'll start trying to shoot projectiles at each other and that's how to set up a ranged and a melee unit Next, we're going to go over how to create your own level for the campaign mode. If we click the play button and go to campaign, we can see that there are currently three levels. And when you beat something like level two, you'll unlock level three. So I beat this level, go to the main menu and go to campaign, level three is unlocked. We're now going to go over the process of how you'd create your own level. If you want to do that, you want to go to file and go to new level and select default. Once we're in this new level, you want to head over to the world settings if the world settings tab isn't there, you want to go to window and go up for world settings. And then in the game mode, you want to look for the campaign game mode. And if I click the play button, I should be in the campaign game mode and I should have a budget. But because my budget is zero, I won't be able to spawn any units. So we need some conditions for the level. To get that, you want to go to the blueprints folder and drag in level conditions. And if we select this and go to the details panel. We can set the budget for the level. So the default value is 10,000. So I'm going to make it so I have 5,000 budget to spend in this level next is the level number so here you should put in the number of which level this is so for me this is going to be level number four and then next you want to have the next level so this is going to be where it takes you if you successfully beat the level i'm just going to leave this at the main menu so once we put in all the values here you want to drag in this line bp so this is looking a bit big so i'm just going to click this world and scale it up a bit so i'll make it 50 and move it a bit down then i'm going to drag in my line blueprint so with this line blueprint if i just click the play button and select one of the units i won't be able to spawn any units on this side i won't be able to spawn units on the left side of this line as we're in campaign mode and we don't want it so the player can't spawn units past them so if you wanted the player to have more space to spawn units you just move this line a bit here next we need to put in some enemies in our level so if we go to the units folder and go to blueprints we can just drag in some enemies by default enemies are set to be on the opposite team so if i just drag in some enemies and place them around the map they'll be on the opposite team so i'll just place three knights in this level if i click the play button and just move the camera we'll see that there are three knights that i have to fight in this level if you want to adjust the starting position of the camera just select the player character and just move it back and into a position where you can see all the units so this is looking a bit better and then the final element we need to add to this level is a nav mesh bounds body this will enable it so our ai can move around this level so if i go to the place actors and look for nav mesh bounds body just drag this in and press the p key so i can see it so if you press the p key you'll be able to see it in green and then I'll just scale this so this covers my map. And now if I hit the play button, we can see I have a budget of 5,000 because that's what I set it to be. And I can spawn in some units, so I'll just spawn in a couple of knights. And if I hit the start battle button, my units will move towards each other and start trying to attack each other. So I quickly won that. And if I hit the next level button, I'll go to the main menu as that's where I set it to take me. So next we're going to set up this level so it's connected to our level unlock and save system. 
So first of all, we want to save this level. So if we go to file and go to save all, it will ask us to save this level. And I'll just call this level four. If we go to the save game folder and go to the battle simulator save, we can see there's this level unlock variable. Right now, I've set it so there are nine levels that you'll be able to unlock in the campaign. If you wanted to add more levels, you could just click this add button here. Next, to add this level to our campaign HUD so that we can play and unlock it, we want to go to HUDs and go to campaign HUD. We want to select one of these buttons, press Control C, and then in this horizontal box, press Control V to create another button. I just made it so each button has an offset of around 30. So this button has 0, this button has 30, this button has 60. So I'll make this button have 90. And we can make it so when we click this button, it opens a certain level. And then in my campaign HUD, if I select this button and go to level name, I can make it so that when I click this button and if I've unlocked it, it will open level 4. And here I can write what level number this will open. So if you remember earlier in level 4, if we just go to our level conditions, I made it so this was level number 4. So here in the level number, I'm going to make it 4. And what this will do is it will basically check to see that we've unlocked level 3 before. So if we've unlocked level 3, then we'll be able to play this level. However, if we've not unlocked the previous level, then we won't be able to play this level. So now I just click compile and press play. I'll just go to the main menu screen and go to the campaign. As you can see, level 4 is locked because we have currently not beat level 3. So if I just close this, and I went to level 3, and click play, and just beat it quickly. And now that I've beat this, if I go to my main menu and go to campaign, level 4 will be unlocked and I'll be able to play it. And that is how to create a level unlock system. That's all for the overview of this kit. If you have this system and this helped, a review would be greatly appreciated. See you next time. Bye.